Murphy from CMU, and the format remains the same for 15 minutes, and then we have the discussion after that. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Rogerio Bonacci, and I'm going to present my paper on auto the autonomous drone cinematographer uh, using artistic principles to create smooth, safe, occlusion free trajectories for aerial filming. Uh, I'm going to begin with the motivation and, re and the related work. Uh, so recording images is something fundamentally human, and we have been doing this for uh, thousands of years, began with the cave paintings, and nowadays we have uh, new hardware that allows us, like, such as cameras, that allow us to take uh, both photos and videos of uh, our lives, of our surroundings. And more recently, the development of, development of drones has allowed us to uh, take photos and videos in a completely new manner, so we, are, we have access to um, this third perspective on ourselves, and we can we can uh, uh, record scenes from this aerial perspective. And this is something that had had never been possible before with the use of handheld cameras. And this has many potential applications, uh, such as filming uh, sports, both indoors or outdoors. You could use such a system for professional filmmaking. You can record uh, social events with your friends and family, and even this could be used for uh, creating uh, news reports and TV reports. Uh, but the use of drones for uh, cinematography, for filming, is an extremely complex and hard task. Uh, how it's done nowadays is usually you have a team of experts, of pilot experts, to control one single drone. Uh, sometimes you can have up to two or three people controlling one, one drone. And this happens because you have very difficult controls. Uh, they're usually related to the attitude of the aircraft and not really on what you see on the screen. Uh, and we are handling with uh, the systems that have multiple degrees of freedom, so they are in inherently hard to control. Uh, plus, if you think of automating the, the act of filming using a drone, you have to consider many other uh, aspects, such as incorporating artistic principles into the visual composition, into the motion plan. You also have to uh, reason about what's going to happen next into the future, so, where is, so the actor may be uh, at position A at this moment, but where is the actor going to go in the future so that you can do a non myopic plan? Plus, you have to integrate all of this decision making process into an onboard computer and do all of these computations in real time. So, uh, it's a very big challenge. So, let's take a look at what has been done uh, in the past in this area. Uh, we, we see a lot of different papers on the topic of aerial filming that have been published in the past. And even though they solve very interesting uh, problems of, uh, related to aerial filming, we can still identify uh, many limitations of previous work. For example, we see papers where uh, they can only handle uh, offline planning, so you must have completely scripted scenes before filming. Uh, we see, also see work where they don't have obstacle avoidance, or the, where they require a uh, very precise motion capture system to localize both the drone and the actor. Um, also, many, most of the papers do not handle the occlusion caused by obstacles. Um, so your camera may, may actually not see the actor because you have an obstacle on the way. We also see work where uh, they only handle very reactive motion plans and they don't consider forecasts of where the actor is going, to, going into the future. Uh, also, there's work with very simplistic obstacle representations, such as just treating all obstacles as ellipsoids. And most of the work that has been published can only handle either static environments or environments where people are uh, walking in very low speeds. So based on all these limitations, we propose uh, our work uh, and, we, and our contributions are a system that can uh, replan non-myopically and online, plus uh, can avoid obstacles in the occlusions caused by obstacles in the camera view. We can deal with arbitrary obstacle shapes during the motion plan, uh, and also work outdoors in real life scenarios with different types of actors, uh, not only people, but also bicycles and, and cars in high speed chases. So now I'm going to jump to our approach and some of the results. And before I start talking about the method itself, I'll just show a brief video so you can have an idea of what our system is doing in practice. So this is a completely autonomous uh, shot taken with our, our system. 
it identifies the actor, which in this case is this car, and it's replanning online. I'll just pause for a second so you can see a little bit of what's going on. Uh, so the drone ident identifies the car, and we use a common filter to predict the car's future trajectory for the next 10 seconds, which is this purple trajectory in the middle. And based on this uh, actor forecast, we can uh, calculate based on uh, artistic inputs from a director, we calculate the blue curve, which, it, which represents where we artistically would like to be if there were no obstacles in the environment. And then using this blue curve, we optimize in real time for the red trajectory that takes into account obstacles for both uh, safety concerns and also for uh, occlusion avoidance. Yeah, we can also handle multiple types of actors. In this case, we're filming uh, me. I was riding a bicycle. And you can see that as I change my direction, uh, we can still maintain, we smoothly maintain a right side shot uh, that, and it goes over the mountain, both avoiding uh, collisions and occlusions. Uh, here's a very high level overview of how this system, of, of our system. We uh, separated the vision pipeline from the planning pipeline on purpose, and this was quite different from previous uh, literature in this area. Because uh, when you're dealing with, uh, with actors in real life environments, you usually have a very uh, noisy estimation of where your actor is. Sometimes this can be, if you're using GPS, for example, outdoors, sometimes your actor can be two or three meters away uh, from the ground truth position in your, in your GPS measurement. So um, if you optimize your system to look at the expected actor position, you may actually be pointing your camera towards nothing and the actor is on the other side. That's why we decided to make our vision pipeline work solely based on the visual input. So we process the image from a monocular camera and we control the a independent uh, camera, gimbal camera. And then for the planning pipeline, we receive the actor's um, state estimation, a pre-mapped environment, and the drone state estimation, and we compute trajectories online. Here's a few more details on the vision pipeline. We process the image from the gimbal <coughs> with a custom neural network architecture that's optimized for uh, to run uh, on board the drone, so it's, it's, it's quite fast. And we get a bounding box of our actor. This can be, in this case, a car, but it could also be a bicycle or a person. And based on this bounding box, we uh, have a BD controller on the gimbal that places the actor on the desired screen position. This may be just the half of the screen or uh, can be using the rule of thirds, for example, you can place it in a particular position. Uh, now we go to the planning pipeline where the, our key idea here was to use a smooth trajectory optimization balancing several objectives. And these are obstacle avoidance, occlusion avoidance, smoothness, and also the the director's artistic intent. Uh, so first we have to define the trajectories for both the quad rotor and for the actor. And these are um, X, Y, Z positions over time. And now let's take a look at the cost function that we're trying to optimize. Uh, the first cost is obstacle avoidance. And here we use the concept of sign distance field. And we, we follow the approach from Radliff for a motion planner that is very common for manipulation tasks called CHOMP. Some of you may, may know this. And basically we're penalizing, we're trying to stay as far away from, from obstacles as possible. And um, what we penalize is the, um, is the integral over our trajectory of the sign to distance cost. And this is a differentiable function as well. And we take advantage of this property in our optimization process. Uh, next, we have the occlusion cost function, and this was something novel that we developed in this paper uh, to work with arb arbitrary obstacle shapes. Uh, we also take advantage of the sign distance field to, uh, in this case, so for each moment of time, we have a pair of actor and camera positions in space, and what we try to minimize is the uh, penetration of this, um, of this line into obstacles. Um, this line that connects both the actor and the camera. And 
Uh, then we have to integrate this not only over the line for this particular moment of time, but then we have to integrate over uh, all times of the trajectory. And it turns out that this function is also a differentiable cost function that uh, now we can use into our, our optimization. Uh, it makes things much easier because occlusion is usually a binary concept. We either see or don't see the actor, but now we can actively like avoid it. Uh, the third part is the smoothness cost. This one is uh, quite simple in concept. We're trying to minimize time derivatives of our trajectory. And in practice, we minimize uh, velocities, accelerations, and, and jerk. Uh, the fourth one is the artistic intent cost, where um, first we, I read a lot of books on cinematography, on artistic principles, and I tried to like boil down what are the most basic principles that uh, can be used to generate most of the shots in um, like common in practice when filming. And these are the, um, the position of the actor on screen space, and that's handled actually by the vision pipeline. But then uh, as far as, uh, as, far as the, the drone's motion planner is concerned, we have to worry about the uh, line of action angle, which is like where, with respect to the actor, the drone should be positioned in terms of yaw. Then we have to worry about the tilt angle, so how far up or down you are, and the scale of the shot, so like how close or, or far away the drone is. And then based on these parameters and based on the actor's motion forecast, we can calculate a, that blue curve that you saw before, that is a desired artistic position for the drone. And this cost is calculated as the L2 distance between the, the current iteration of the drone's uh, trajectory and this desired artistic trajectory. And now that we defined all four costs, we can jump to the optimization loop. And what's interesting about this is that we can compute uh, outside of the main loop the Hessian, an approximation of the Hessian for this cost function, uh, for both, and where we can we have analytical derivatives uh, for both the um, smoothness cost and for the artistic intent costs. And then for a maximum of uh, any iterations, we follow a, steep, a direction of steepest descent to minimize the costs, and at the end we end up with a trajectory that minimizes all of those four costs. Uh, here are some of the results from our field tests. Uh, up here you can see the, the drone is doing a right side shot, and this is our actor, and it successfully avoids the mountain for both uh, uh, safety and, and inclusion. Here we have a comparison between a, two tests, one where we use the occlusion cost function and one where we don't. You can see that uh, all these details are in the, the paper, but you can see uh, that we end up always having the actor visible on site. Uh, here are some more results where we test, where we execute different types of shots, such as a circular shot around the actor, and we also uh, have results with different types of actors, such as like, bicycles and, and cars, and high-speed chases. And in conclusion, we delivered a very robust aerial system for cinematography where we can automatically detect and track the actor. We can plan in real time using a non-myopic uh, motion forecast. We uh, also can film outdoors in, in real life scenarios and with uh, arbitrary obstacle shapes for occlusion for safety. And some of our future work, just very quickly, uh, something you may uh, say is that Right now we're using the, uh, a hat with GPS and a magnetometer for, to estimate the actor's position. So uh, something that we have already implemented is to localize the actor just using the images from the, from the camera and we got rid of the, the hat with the GPS. It's not in this paper but we're going to publish that very soon. Uh, also, we, in this paper we were loading the environment from a file and um, so it was a pre-mapped environment, but now we are actively working on mapping the environment online. We are putting a, a LiDAR on the drone. And a next step is also to start learning a, a static, aesthetics cost function from demonstrations. Uh, this is the, the next thing we're going to do in this project. So feel free to ask any questions uh, now or after the, in the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. I think we have time for one or two questions. Any other speakers at all? Yes. Uh, did you find there were some interesting trade-offs with the weights of each?
cost function, or do most choices result in nice paths? Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, it's something that we, uh, I had to, for, for that specific environment, I had to select r relative weights that rendered a, a nice smooth motion. But it's, I think that's a, actually a very interesting topic for research of like how, and not only for this project, but for many motion planners, how do you choose the relative weights between your costs such that you have a desired outcome in the end. Oh, so uh, how, how specific is this, this framework to a quadra-mounted camera? Could this also work for a crane camera that's trying to follow, follow an actor around or something like that? Yeah, and I think it's not specific to quadra motors at all. This could be also applied to a ground vehicle, to a, a crane camera. Uh, just, I guess, just depends on how you frame your, uh, your, your trajectory, right? You, you could even frame it not, not only in like XYZ, you could also can also be framed for a configuration space, for, for joint space of a manipulator, for example. Okay, let's thank our speakers, uh, and we can have any other questions in the discussion panel.